And this actually is, um, uh, I found the chemical here, it's uh, called melatonin. And not surprising, as I went up and checked up on it, it's, uh, it's actually an amine. An amine is a type of uh, organic chemical that has uh, an ammonia par uh, uh, part of the, uh, the the chemical structure of an amine has uh, ammonia inside. So, uh, and, and ammonia is basically NH3. Basically, uh, it's three hydrogens bonded to a nitrogen, and that any amine you will see one or more. Uh, uh, amino grouping, or should I say, uh, you can find one or more uh, groupings of uh, ammonia inside of it. This being said, uh, I had said before that uh, psychology is kind of all over the place on different things, and there are different researchers looking at different sections of things, and psychology tries to differentiate itself from uh, the we call it the New Age or the spiritual view or the spiritual side of dreaming in terms of dreaming being something you know akin to fortune telling and so on and so forth. And I found here in uh, the uh, in this book here, uh, Wide Awake at 3 a.m. Uh, I found in here actually uh, on dreams here and it's a dream reported by uh, uh, Freud's patient. They talk and they talk about how Freud and even Jung uh, actually went into dream interpretation. So, but the thing is, the interpretation, rather than being uh, about fortune telling, it's in the terms of psychology, but it's still pretty much the same. It, it is dream interpretation. And as much as they would like to try to get away from the fortune telling side of things, that's not necessarily the case. And ironically enough, as I was reading through this, uh, and looking for what I was sort of looking, I was looking, for, I was looking actually for information on melatonin, but didn't have uh, melatonin. This is primarily a uh, psychology book, and it has some physiology in it. Uh, so, but as you're looking through it and you see, and I went to, and I looking at the dreaming section, I came across uh, another one that says creative and lucid dreaming. And that's what I was talking about last time, last episode. Uh, I was talking about lucid dreaming, and it was the last video on YouTube that I was looking at last night was on lucid dreaming. Uh, one girl was talking about lucid dreaming in, in, in there as well. And that's basically uh, dreaming while you're aware of dreaming. And this is the type of dreams I've had. I've been doing lucid dreaming now. Not necessarily by choice, it was just simply that while I was asleep and in my dreams, I'm aware that I am in a different or altered state, or an, what I call an altered or, or another universe. In other words, uh, I have a differentiation between what I call the real world and my dream world. Uh, the dream world uh, always behaved to me as if it was its own separate world. And I can go in and do exploration of the world. I did. The, the, I have done a lot of exploration inside the dream world, and I call it a dream world rather than lucid dreaming because, uh, from the perspective of the individual as you go in there, it is its own own world, and you can try and explore different things in there. But and although you're doing the exploration, lucid dreaming if you read the text and, and the different comments on it, lucid dreaming is, is that you're supposed to be able to have control of the dreams. And this is, the, the when they talk about this, they're talking about, in the classical term, we call absolute control, that everything in the dream you can control. Well, if you go on and try to push the boundaries inside lucid dreaming, what you'll find out is more often than that, while you do have some degree of control in lucid dreaming, the, the actual degree of control does not meet or come close to what they call absolute control of the dream. In other words, uh, when you're dreaming in lucid dreaming, you are awake, but you're not awake inside the what's called the real world, you're awake inside the dream world. Because while you do have control over yourself and some elements of the dream, you do not have total control over the dream itself. 
the dream seems the, the, the overall function of the dream, in terms of the functionality of the dream, seems to come without, is, is, in other words, it's outside of your control. What you have control over is what certain things you do inside the dream, and, it, and, and these things are specific to you. They're the, they're the, the actions and choices that you make inside the dream, dream, this is where you have that degree of control. But outside of that, you really don't have control of the dream. And so, uh, my argument would be, rather than calling it lucid dreaming, uh, that you would actually call it uh, a dream world. You would consider it to be a world or a universe. And this could be viewed in, in, in the physics term as a parallel universe uh, that is parallel to the, what we call the physical, the, uh, the XYZ uh, real universe, right? or the, what's called our, this is our four dimensional universe here, uh, which is X, and you have the axis X, Y, and Z, and then the fourth uh, dimension would be time. So, uh, so, it, so this is our space time universe. The dream world represents another space-time universe, but does not specifically involve this space-time universe. The overlapping between the dream universe, which is parallel to the uh, parallel to the uh, to the real universe, uh, only intersects and interacts when the chemical melatonin is depleted and you have sleepwalking, sleep talking, and you have an interaction between the environment and yourself while you're dreaming. Well, and the thing is, this is where I have, again, where we have a fuzzy boundary, and this is where I say uh, uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle certainly has a, uh, has a large, much larger role in the world and universe than simply within quantum physics. Is that in most cases, as you look into a, a lot of different modeling, the models never actually meet reality. And, and in many cases, while things can be true, they're not completely true. They're, they're true to a certain degree. And when you have this true to a certain degree, and you have this, and that means that there is a certain degree that there's uncertainty. There's, there's, there's an uncertainty about the truth. That's the, Heisenberg, that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right there. And it can be applied on a more universal basis and inside uh, the, uh, and inside the, uh, inside uh, quantum mechanics. So, again, applying this to the, uh, the, the universe, uh, to the, the, the dream universe, and about lucid dreaming, uh, this goes back to say that uh, melatonin, which does paralyze you, and that's where the whole thing is about melatonin here, which does paralyze you, only paralyzes you to a certain degree. In other words, you can have, while you're still sleeping, and melatonin be perfectly functioning, you can have auditory input, you can have sensory and touch input still functioning inside the dream world. And you can also have taste and other types of sensory input uh, that doesn't re necessarily require movement, still active and functioning. That, 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 and so there's an overlap between the real universe and the dream universe. So and this is this, <laughs> and this is going to give you some idea of where my mind is and what my average day is like. Because this is this is this is what I've woken up thinking about. So. Uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. I think this is long enough for um, for this first segment, this opening segment. I am going to get further into this whole dreaming thing here uh, as I get this whole this room here set up to do, be more functional, and I do have it more functional now, so I can give you more information. I can do more filming back here and give you a, a change in scenery to a certain degree. <laughs> here I go, the Heisenberg has something different. Well, this change to a certain degree. So anyways, uh, I will see you after church because I'm going to go be going to chemistry again tonight. It's still chemistry, so I'm going to church again tonight. And for me, church means house. So take it easy. Yeah, it's uh, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I didn't end up going to church today. Uh, the, the ride that I had going with me used to my dad. Uh, he wasn't feeling well today. So I didn't end up going, 
but I spent about uh, three hours uh, doing uh, graphics editing uh, to do the graphic overlays and I began to realize that uh, there is an enormous chunk of work ahead of me. <laughs> uh, I'm getting through it, so it's not that I'm not getting through it, I am getting through it. It's just that it's more than I had expected it to be. Uh, and it's sort of like uh, I'm at the sort of b bottom of the hill and working my way up, working my, my way up again. So uh, I'm pushing forward, chugging forward. Uh, I got more clean done today because it, it is Friday, and now on every Friday that's when I start doing my cleaning again uh, to sort of fix the place up. You know, uh, while I do all the, all the uh, the research work uh, during the week, uh, and well, I'm still doing it on the weekend. Uh, the place also has to be cleaned, so, <laughs> you know, that's uh, one of the uh, regular chores that has to be done, and I got that done, well, a good chunk of it done, uh, 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 in terms of starting it today, so, but I'm going to be doing more, and again, it looks like I don't think I'm going to be finishing any earlier than, um, then seven, eight o'clock in the morning, so it's going to be another really, really long night. And at some point in time, probably Sunday, uh, there's going to be uh, going to be a really long day. I'll see how I'll end up filming it because it is going to be a very long day because I, I might pull another all nighter. So we'll see what happens. That all nighter means uh, uh, basically I'm going to end up going without sleep. So. Yeah, getting back into our uh, <laughs> our typical typical uh, schedule. Anyway, uh, I will uh, after this is finished rendering. After it goes up, maybe I will do another section. I'm not too sure. Uh, the first second section this morning was kind of long, and I said I want to keep it around the 30 minute mark. This uh, the episode that I'm editing uh, here now that's rendering. Uh, it went over the uh, 30 minute mark. You'll see that it went over the 30 minute mark. Uh, and so I want to try to sort of pare that back and really keep it to that 30 minute mark. This is something that's going to be experimental. Uh, and that's why it's not exactly going to be 30 minutes. I'm eight, the goal is 30 minutes, but if it's plus or minus a few minutes, then that's all right. Uh, I'll sort of try to deal with that as it comes along. So that's about it for now. I will either see you tomorrow morning uh, back on the coach or uh, maybe uh, uh, in on, on the main research station if I have anything more to say. All right, take it easy. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.